G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can generate random math equations with a random operator using VB.net. So let's begin. So before I get started, I want to quickly say that I've put three text boxes onto a Windows form, along with a label and a button. So once you've got those controls added to your form, just right click on the form itself and go to view code, and that'll bring you up here to the behind the scenes. So let's begin. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go dim random zero as new random, dim random one as new random, and dim random two as new random. Once we've got that done, we need to get our total or our answer. So I'm gonna write dim total as an integer because it's going to be a number that we're going to store basically the answer that the user has to make sure that it matches to whatever they put in the text box three. And we also need to get our operator since we're gonna also generate a random operator. So our dim, just call it operators as a string. It's gonna be a string array and it's gonna equal a new string array. And within that string array, we're going to have the positive the negative times and divide just like that awesome so now you've got that done we need to now create our public sub and this is where we're going to generate our sum from so I'm just going to call it generate sum that way we can refer to it each time we want to generate a new, new equation and now we can begin so I'm going to write here dim num0 equals random0 dot next and this is going to be our first um, number of the equation. So let's make this one between zero and 20. Dim num one equals random one dot next, and it can be between one and 10. Now, because we are also generating a random operator, we need to now also do that as well. So I'll write here dim ran oper, and that's going to equal the random two dot next, and it's going to be between zero and four. And the reason why it's going to be between zero and four is because, well, that's how many we have total here in our operators uh, string array. So now that we've got that done, we can now link our number one and num, uh, num zero to our text boxes. So text box one dot text equals num zero. Text box two dot text will equal num one. So now we've got that, we need to now change our label because at the moment it's just gonna say label one and because we are generating random operators, this will change depending on which um, operators are chosen for the equation. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can do a select case and we'll choose rand op. And so if it's zero, then we know that the label will be a positive. So we can write here total equals num zero plus num one. If the case is a one, then we know that total will equal num zero take away num1 okay because remember total is going to be our answer okay so now if we get case 2 we know that total will equal num0 times num1 and last but not least case 3 we know then that total will equal num0 divide that by num1 Great, so now we've got that done, we now need to change our label. So this can be quite easy. I mean, you could obviously put it within the select class, but, but then you'd have to re repeat code, which we don't really want to have to do. So what I'll do now is simply is going to write label one dot text, and it's going to equal the operators array that we've created, and which one we're going to index it to. Well, it's going to be the random operator, which is the selected one that's being generated for which operator it is. Beautiful, so that's pretty much all you need now to generate a sum with a random operator. Now what we need to do is we need to go back to our form one design and double click on button one and that'll generate the button one click event. And so what we can simply say is if not text box three dot text equals nothing. So meaning they've actually got text in there. Then if text box three dot text is equal to the answer or the total then we can get a message box and that will be the correct answer we can then clear the text box 3 just to make it a bit neater for the second time around and then using our function that we've just created or our sub sorry we've just created we can then tell it to generate a sum again okay however if the answer is incorrect we can write here else, message box dot show, incorrect. And then of course, once again, we can clear the text box 
and hopefully they get it up on the second time. So now if I was to run the program by pressing F5, you can see that the program has started. However, it hasn't accessed that sub that we've created. So in order to do that, what we'll do is we'll close out the program, go back to our form one, and then just double click on the Windows form and you'll get the form unloaded. And then from in there, we can just simply write generate sum. So now press F5. And there we go. The sum is there, it's now asking us for it. So just quickly, I'm just gonna put in three. All right, we know that's obviously incorrect. We're just gonna write that anyways. If we press button one, we can see that it's incorrect and then we can click okay, the text box clears. However, now if we put in six, you can see that the answer is correct. We press okay and then it's gone on to the next sum. However, what happens if I put in, you know, my name, Andrew? Well, it's going to be incorrect because we cannot change a string, in this case, Andrew, to a double, okay? So in order to fix this, there are a number of ways to do it, but something that is sort of quick and nasty in some perspective. We can copy this if statement all the way down to the end if, and we're talking about the one that's text box 3.txt equals total. If we just copy that, type in try, press enter, and then we're gonna try and do this, and then if it isn't correct, we can come down here to message box show, and we can type in ex.message. This will tell us exactly what the problem was and what happened and why it failed. And then we can just simply clear text box three to make it a little bit neater. So this will stop our program from crashing. So now if I type in Andrew, it will simply tell us that, hey, Andrew cannot be converted to a double, it's incorrect. And then it will clear the text box and go on to the next one. Now, of course, you could indeed make a friendly message. So instead of having a generic message that Windows has, we could just simply say, um, please only, um, use a number, I guess, something like that. So now from the program and type in Andrew, you can see it says now please only use a number, okay? So there you go guys, there's this quick tutorial on how you can generate a random math equation along with a random operator. If you have any questions, do leave a comment below. Um, I'm making this video, just um, I had a subscriber actually ask me, hey Andrew, I seen your last video on generating a random math equation, however you didn't generate random operators. So I hope this video helps you, and yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.